What is going on? I want to welcome you from F Core for today, Monday, November 28th, 2022. I'm your host, Sean Murphy, alongside my guy, a uh, Jeff. I afraid it, Jeff. I had to pull out a special cap today. <laughs> it is a good day. It yes, is, it is a great day. It is great to be a Michigan Wolverine. It's great. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could go all day, but anyway. You can let it out. You can let it out. Yeah. Uh-huh. You guys deserve it. Listen, man, I, uh, in all seriousness, when's the last time Michigan's won in Columbus? 2000? Yeah, it's, it's been a long time. It, it's quite long literally time. the first time in my life I've seen them win in Columbus. So, yeah, I'm going to make something of it. But anyway, uh, all that to say, we love Ashton, but <laughs> the Buckeyes. Anyway, Jeff, we are here to talk about Killian Hayes today because a couple weeks ago, we made a video talking about how Killian was broken and he needed to be fixed. Well, damn it, he looks more than fixed. He looks like he's playing some really good basketball. And we got I got a comment over the weekend on the channel saying, you guys need to talk about how Killian's been fixed. And I was like, damn it, I agree. So, Jeff, let's do just that. Killian Hayes, over the past month, has essentially transformed his game from the beginning of the season. He yeah. looks like a completely different player. Jeff, he looks like a completely different person. And that's really the main part of it. He looks different mentally and how he's approaching the game. And we, we talked a lot about it on the podcast with Troy as well. It's like for Killian, it, it's never questioning is what he can do or what he's capable of. It's, it's how does he look on the floor? And a lot of the times, even early in the season when he was struggling, I know a lot of people were already out on Killian. I mean, we were famously, we talked about it here uh, multiple on videos on podcasts about Killian and how we're not so concerned. You, you need more of a sample size to see how we can you know adjust to that. And then boom, Cade gets hurt. He gets thrown into the starting lineup. Now Ivy's missing some games. And we were again, definitely Killian's a little getting... concerned at one point, but we, no, didn't, no question. But we didn't pull the plug like 80% of this. That's, that's where I was going. I think people pulled the plug. And, and for me, at least, I know we've, we've criticized Killian, and as you should, if someone's playing poorly. But you didn't question if he could get back and at least be a, a, a guy. We talked about it, seventh man off your bench. Can he do that? And he's starting playing significant minutes, having a significant role, having more of an offensive burden, and he's handling it well. Like even over the last 10 games, he's averaging basically 11, 6, and 3, shooting yeah. 40% from 3. 40% from 3. And we yeah. what was he? To start the season, he was 3 for 18 over the first couple games, over the mm-hmm. first stretch of games, and people were genuinely concerned about his new jump shot. I think he's answered a lot of those questions. I know there's plenty of season left, but for Killian to to play the role he's in and how he's handled it, um, taking, again, more defensive attention with Ivy and Kate out, I, I think he's handled it well. So all the yeah. praise for Killian. He, de- he deserves all of it. Yeah, you brought it up. He's been averaging about 11 points, five assists, four rebounds, 40% from the field, almost 40% from three ever since that game in Boston. And that really feels like that's been the turning point. And – You know, at the beginning of the year, uh, you know, we talked about how Dwayne Casey said that, you know, Killian is just getting in his head right now, you know, like, and and that was clear on the court. And and I think what he's been doing ever since is he's been decisive. Like if he's going to do something, he's going to do it. He's not thinking once or twice about it. He's not, you know, he's not pondering things. I still think at times, like, you know, like Killian can over dribble in a possession. I definitely think that can still be an issue but Jeff like it's it's his decisiveness not just like beyond the arc but also like he's been operating more in the mid range he's been doing more with getting to the post like he's been shooting more floaters like he's been more confident and decisive inside the arc as well and I just think like it's like one of those things where I didn't know that Killian could be that effective in the mid range because I've never really seen him try it right or I've never really seen him try it on a consistent basis so I think the fact that, you know, like he and and, and like, I think even, you know, like after that game of Boston, he said like he feels like he's starting to learn how he can score in the NBA or how he can get to his spots. And when a player feels like, you know, and for some players, it might take longer than others, but it seems for Killian, it seems like mentally it's slowing. It's starting to slow down for him. It's starting to click. And, you know, like even though like it's still not the most impressive stats, like 11 points a game, 40 percent from the field, but like that's. That like you know that shouldn't sound like a godsend for a player, right. but compared but compared to where he was, that is amazing progress. 
Yeah, and think about the role he walked into, right? You 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 were you had a significant role when you first came here. Now you have Kate. Now you have Jaden Ivey. You're coming off the bench. He's he's playing off ball. He's, it seems like he was basically just spotting up, taking threes. He was settling early in the season, and then boom, Cade's out. Jay Ivey's out, and now a guy who again thrives with the ball in his hands. Killian's able to to you know take on more of an offensive burden. It seems like he's getting to his spots and, instead of settling for these bad looks. To your point, and on top of that. The confidence offensively is translating to to defensively. I mean, yes. he's had multiple games with three steals during the stretch of games we talked about. Like, it, that was one thing we pointed out earlier, too, is not only is he losing that confidence offensively, but defensively it seems like he's he's taken a little bit of a step back. He's done the opposite. Um, he's been a big reason why the Pistons, at least lately, have looked better defensively. And I think Killian, dude, the, the confidence goes a long way. Like, him coming into a game after just playing well the last stretch of games, this, he just – he's – He's on an all-time high right now. He's in a good flow, yeah. and you yeah. love just, you love for Killing to be in that type of situation, man. Really, and he's one and he's one of the reasons why Detroit's still been competitive, even though they've yeah. had four to five starters out of their lineup on a consistent basis, right? Like in that game in particular, you know, at Phoenix, he had seventeen, nine, and eight. Uh, that game against the Lakers, eighteen. You know, he went out and had eighteen, nine, and three. Like this is like. Yeah. Something that if he can go out and do on a consistent basis, I mean, my he's Lord, he's got a spot in this league for him. Yeah, no exactly. But it's the fact that, you know, not only is he doing this with like the elevated opportunity, but like also he's doing this against starters now. Like it's not like earlier in the season when he was a backup coming off the bench and he was, you know, putting up those stats against reserves, you know, like he's putting up better statistics against starter level competition mm -hmm. and that's exactly what you, what you want to see. And so I, you know, when, when looking at th this type of elevated play, it's like, obviously you want to just see him continue to get better as the season goes on. But also like, yeah, it's not even just like, it, like his scoring and his defense, like even his passing looks crisper. Like even his playmaking is somehow taking a step, step forward as well. It's like, man, this guy just, whole other person in the first 11 game yeah completely completely night and day and again if people want to credit even one percent to coaching that'd be great because i think during the stretch Dwayne has done a good job as well um you know still instilling confidence in these guys for killing to go out the way he's playing um and how better the pistons have looked like you said even without five to six starters I think Dwayne gets some of that credit too, but to your point, Killian, a guy who they need, I mean, you lose Ivy and Cade, really two of your best passers along with Killian, and now Killian's role steps up dramatically, and he's handled all that pressure really well. And I think the game against Boston, to play like that against one of the better or if not the best defensive team in the NBA, that's got to be something. You know, that, talk about confidence for a player moving forward. Right. Like if you could do that, it's not Oklahoma City. This isn't Oklahoma City and the second unit guys or Killian playing against second unit guys. This is starters playing against a finals contender, and he's played that well. I think these games adding up, stacking these up for Killian, I, I think it's going to boy well, even with Cade and Ivy back, you know, if, if he's here next year. I, I do yeah. think it'll carry over. Well, and, and Jeff, another thing that you and I talked about in that video a couple weeks ago was it was imperative how Dwayne Casey and Troy Weaver was going to handle Killian yeah. Hayes because we were talking about should he maybe go down to the G League should he maybe you know have his minutes adjusted if anything his role increased in the midst of the storm so like the fact that Dwayne Casey showed that level of confidence in him clearly was working with him and and you know getting him to a spot where he could feel comfortable it's pretty clear that under Dwayne Casey straight up like I'll, I'll just say it he deserves credit for that yeah, and, co coaches can take confidence and they can give confidence. Those are two mm -hmm. things coaches can do, man. And, and you could have, Dwayne at this point could have taken the confidence completely away from Killian, but he's done nothing but instill it even more in him. So I think yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think he deserves some of that credit as well. Yeah. Also, Whether people want to give it to him or not. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, exactly. Cause side note, we'll get back to, to uh, we'll get back to Killian here in a second, but Keith Black Trudeau said this over the weekend. And I thought it was a phenomenal point. He said, by the way, if this last week's, if that's if this last week hasn't made it very clear, Dwayne Casey isn't the reason this team is five and sixteen. I don't know what else to tell you. The Pistons aren't running anything. They didn't run the first fifteen games. They're just running it better, and the ball isn't stopping nearly as much. They're also not missing defensive rotations at nearly the rate they were before this trip began. You just hope that the younger players see that and come back with a renewed focus because they got a great demonstration on how to play the right way. Amen. And I think that's the I think that's the big thing is that. 
not only are a lot of these veterans coming in showing you how to play the right way, not only are a lot of these, you know, like young deep rotation guys, you know, coming in and playing really good basketball, but also when you're going out there with dealing with as many injuries as you are to as many key players as you are, you're bound to, you know, going to lose games. And, and I think a lot of like games that we've lost over the last couple of weeks is simply just come down to the fact that we were just out talented by yeah. high class teams. But you know, who's kept us in those games, Killian Hayes. And that's, what's yeah. been, you know, a, a incredibly impressive, you know, like talking about, you know, like the, the rest of this season, you know, we talked about the pairing of, of Cade and Ivy, you know, in that backcourt, we focused so long on that. Right. But, you know, we, we, we talk about how, you know, like we have no idea on a timetable for Cade's return. We're pretty certain that Jay and Ivy will be back in the lineup at some point. Right. Mm -hmm. I I'm interested to see what the Killian Ivy pairing is going to do for this team going down the stretch. I'm interested to see what type of chemistry they can develop because Jeff with, with Killian's playmaking and Ivy's explosiveness, are those not two guys who could fit together like a glove yeah. and play really good basketball together? I'll, and I'll tell you this, if, if Killian's shooting 40% from three when he's back too, uh, during that stretch of games, then I'll tell you what, it's going to work even better because those well, guys, they're going to be able to, they're going to have to be able to play off ball. And, and Jay Nivey shooting has come a long way. It's something that I think a lot of people overlook to start the season. And Killian Hayes over this last 10 games, 40% from three. Now the season, you know, he's got a lot to catch up on. But in the stretch, I'm telling you, to your point, not even offensively, but defensively as well. Think about those two in your backcourt and what they did when they were healthy playing together. Um, it's a lot of things to look forward to, even without Cade. I, I think in a season where you're losing a lot of games, Bagley and Burks, Bagley's been playing well over the last couple of games. Um, Livers has, has earned significant time. So a lot, lot to look forward to, even without in, or even with injuries. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's that that's the thing is that, you know, even with injuries, there's still a lot of talent. And, you know, even with injuries – there's still the importance of going out and, and evaluating and seeing what you have in house, because with that is where you see guys like what they're going to do with opportunities. And I think Killian's been a shining example of that, you know, before we end this video quick, cause I don't know if this is a player that would get their own video, but I think another player that did that that's doing that is Isaiah livers. I've been really impressed with what livers has been doing on the defensive end. And even though like, I'm not worried about like his shot and the consistency of it just yet, because I think, you know, like he's still figuring out where he stands in the rotation and like where where he's at role wise and minutes wise. Also, it, he's just been such a consistently good shooter at literally every level that he's been that like I'm I'm assuming he's going to get that together at some point. But also, Jeff, what I what what I you know, we talk about how skilled he is, you know, on the offensive end. And we talked about, you know, some of the flashes that we saw on the defensive end in summer league. But those aren't flashes anymore, Jeff. Like Isaiah Livers is a damn good defensive player. Yeah, and on top of that, too, for, for Isaiah Livers to step into the role he had to step into when Bay missed those games, for him to start. And we did a lot of videos before the season who 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 should start. This is before the Bojan trade. We had Livers in, in a couple of those lineups, and a lot yeah. of that was because of what he can do defensively, his versatility, and his shooting ability. And I'm with you. But this, this, the, you know, the slump he's in shooting-wise, that, that's something you're going to see. He's, he's going to have a hot stretch. He's going to struggle. I'm not too concerned. I think he'll come out well, of yeah, that. Well, yeah, the whole team but was struggling to exact, shoot. It's right. hard, yeah. yeah. It, it's, but to your point, defensively, he's brought the Pistons a whole nother option. And, and think about it. We, we made this joke about livers. Every team needs one livers or two livers, guys that can be versatile defensively, knock down shots. Your team can just be all the team. Isaiah livers and, that they can have. And, and on top of that, think about what he brings – leadership wise like that's something i think doesn't get talked about enough with isaiah livers how vocal he is and calling guys out telling guys where to be that's invaluable because not yeah. a lot of guys can do that as well so livers has been great man he's he's the perfect he's a player's coach I mean, yeah really. for sure or a, yeah. a coach's player yeah coach's player for sure and, and yeah. i even think like playing alongside a guy like alec burks like i feel like that's like a like a very feasible you know outlook for livers on the offensive end too yeah. just like you know if, if, if isaiah livers can just keep developing his ability as a scorer and then, like, just keep doing what he does as a defensive player, he'll have a 10-plus year career in this league. Yeah, no question. Yeah. 
So excited to see what he does. Excited to see where this team goes going forward. There's, you know, again, even through the midst of the injuries, even through the losses, guys, there's still a lot of exciting things to see in this team. And with that, what do you think? Let us know in the comments section down below. But also, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Jeff Iafrady and at Sean Halfcourt. And be sure you follow us on TikTok as well because we're doing a whole lot of TikTok and shorts content, man. I'm pretty proud of it. So go, let's go check that out. Well, folks, Thank you so much for tuning in. We will catch you guys next time from Half Court. Be sure you subscribe.